brothers, colleagues, sisters, friends, everywhere and anywhere, wherever you are, whenever you are, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, assalamu alaikum, good day. Today we're talking about a different subject, which is generation age and successive generations, generation gaps, and the way we deal with different generations in the West. Before we go to discuss this in depth, we need to talk about generation age. I put 11 points in trying to relate the generation age into different social changes. First one, generation age and technological development. What is the impact of the technological development on the generation age? Number two, generation age and the speed of social communication, social media. Number three, generation age and the abundance, the abundance or the plethora of the available information on social media. Number four, generation age and the inability of the young people to comprehend this kind of information. Generation age and the lack of patience to read, write, listen, and comprehend from the younger generation. Number six, generation age and the plethora of change, social change in the society day in and day out. Number seven or eight, generation age and the increased number of uh, natural disaster, climate change, because of climate change, and then actually the armed conflict. The generation age and the lack of social services available for the, the, the society. There's no social service anymore because most of the money is spent on military or security. Generation age and the shortness of the age of people living on this planet. We find the people live less life because less resources, because lack of resources and less uh, uh, social services they have. Generation age and the relation with the increased number of street children. Generation age and the impact of economical moral, social problems on this kind of generations. Generation age and the uh, weakness or the lack of educational facilities provided to the young children and the spread of ignorance in the society. Generation age and the second generation or the first generation and the relation between the first and the second and third generation. This kind of generation age and the relationship with the changes in the social climate it is very, very impacting on the life of the second generation, whether we live in the north or south or east and west. When we look at the west, I came to the west 1977, which means nearly 50 years ago. Before me, actually came to UK, was well, another generation came from Asia and from Africa after the Second World War. Those kind of the first generation who came with high moral value, high commitment for community bonding, high commitment for religious spreading the religious values, high commitment for building a very strong connecting and bonding social life for the younger generation. They build what? They build the corner shop, which feed halal food. They build the mosques. They build the community center. And they were striving their life by hands and legs and everything to try to earn their living and build this kind of social infrastructure for the second generation, which came later on. The second generation, when they came, they came with a gap. The first generation could not be able to speak the language, do not know the local culture, do not know the local, or understand the local values. But they came with this high spirit, they were high spirited to build this kind of infrastructure for the second generation to come, to found mosques, found community centers, found corner shops, 
which later on became institutions, became schools, became uh, companies, became factories, and, 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 and. When we look at the gap between the first one, which I, I left this time in UK, when I found that some of the youngsters were a little bit ashamed of that their father or their parents could not be able to speak English, and they were just shying out, not showing their parents or, or exposing their parents to the public. This was my struggle at that time because I came from a, a second generation after their parents. So I was actually between the generation of the younger generation of this, uh, which is uh, born by the first generation and the first generation. So I was one of the people who are defending actually the quality and the commitment and the spirit of the first generation. This gap is always there. This gap is always there. Why? Because my father who came to England or came to America or came to Europe or came to any part of the world, his, his idea of community building is, 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 is focused and spinning around the moral value that he has at home in Pakistan or India or Bangladesh or Sri Lanka or whatever you call it, Muslims or non-Muslims. And they wanted their children to preserve such an identity. Okay? Plus, protecting their chastity in a very open society, Western society. That's why this gap came out between actually become grow, growing, actually become bigger because of the, the educational system has its culture, its values, its moral system, its philosophy of thinking, and my generation who came to UK or to Europe or to America or to the West having other moral and social value and social norms and culture as well. So here, how can we sort out this problem? How can we find a way to bridge the gap between the first generation, the second generation, the third generation, and the fourth generation, and so on? We have, we have, we have to tell the second generation to listen to how far the first generation faced the difficulties to build your mosque, to build your church, to build your school, to build your madrasa, to build the corner shop, to build the culture, to print even the book, to teach your local language, whether it's Urdu or Hebrew or uh, Arabic or uh, Sawahili or uh, Punjabi or Gujarati or uh, Bengali, whatever you call it. Actually, I came here. We have to make this kind of uh, mutual communication between the parents' generation and the younger people just by involving them, listen to this, by involving them with the mosque management or the shop management or the company management or the institution management in the decision making process. So when the younger generation come to the institution, which could be a religious institution, theological institution, others, they are learning from the first generation how they strived very hard and spend their life and invest their life in paving the way for the second generation and telling the second generation do not lose the track and try to balance between your culture, your values, your moral system, as well as the good culture, the good values, and the good moral system in the country that you live, and to protect them actually according to your religion without involving the younger generation in the management and the consultation of the how to run our institution. Actually, at that time or later on, we will have this gap forever. Not only younger generation, let me stress, not only younger generation, let me stress, I'll say it again, not only younger generation, let me stress the woman participation in the building process of any social infrastructure. Whether it is a mosque, community center, or uh, Islamic center, or a factory, or humanitarian organization, or social organization, 
why I'm talking about the woman. A woman is my mother. A woman is my wife. A woman is my daughter. A woman is my niece. A woman is my auntie. A woman is my grandma. A woman is my neighbor. A woman is my colleague in the office. So they looking at the society and the community differently to us. So if I want to bridge the gap, to bridge the gap, okay? Bridge the gap. Then now the gap is like this. I want to bridge the gap, okay? If I want to bridge the gap, I have to allow or to empower such generation and uh, gender in my management. So the, the, the generation, which is the younger generation, to be a part of the process of consultation and a part of the process of decision maker. Younger boys, uh, younger men, and younger women. Plus, with the woman as well. You know why? Because the younger generation have different speed of thinking, speed of reaction, speed of vision, speed of looking the process of change differently. They have the power of speed, actually. This is them. That's why I need them, why well, we need them. The women in the, in the society have another value. They have the culture differently. They have the emotion, they have the love, they have the care, they have the commitment, they have the tediousness of dealing with the nitty-gritty thing in the community more than the men. The elder men could have more wisdom and more experience. So on one side, wisdom and experience, and another side, the love and the care and the bonding of the woman, and the third side is the power of young people and the strength and the direction and the speed of their action. I have to bring the three on the table to be actually to be a part of the process of thinking, planning, deciding, and leading and empowering the younger generation while I am in office. I have to empower or we have to empower the younger generation and women to be in office while I am in office with them to be leaders while I am a leader, to create leaders, not to create followers. Most of our mosques and our Islamic centers, unfortunately, not creating leaders, but creating followers. You know, the proverb saying, a leader will create leaders. Huh? A leader will create leaders and will not create followers. The one who creates followers is a dictator, not a leader. Is somebody who does not understand the depth of the dimension and the multiplicity of action of the local community. The one who sidelined the young people, the one who sidelined women from the decision making, the one who sidelined other culture, other society, other ethnic group from decision making is not a leader. A leader is not a sect, is not a sectarian individual. It's not a politician that actually plays the, the cards between this community and this community and this community and this community. No, it's not that way. It doesn't go this way. A leader creates a leader. A dictator creates followers. Because the dictator cannot tolerate the other opinion or the second opinion or the third opinion or the younger age opinion or the woman's opinion because he is or she is a dictator. He is from this group. He only looks or she only looks at the interests of the end group. A leader should be more inclusive, more leading or dealing with participatory approach. What do I mean by participatory approach? To try to engage the local community in most what we doing for them. Because how can I do something or develop something or produce some product for a community without their consultation? This is how we need to look at to gab to, to, to bridge the gap between generation A, generation B, generation C, generation H. Why? Because the speed of event and the speed of change and the speed of problems affecting different communities in, at this time is more than we expect and more than our capacity as organization. And before I conclude my statement or my message today, in our society, no matter how big or small, the amount of problem facing each individual in the society 
is beyond the capacity and the capability and the resources of one organization, of one sect, of one group of thought. No, 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 you can't deal with everything. Because, because the rising number of social, of, of, of the processes of social changes, not social change, social changes is incredible and beyond beyond the capability of one uh, of one organization even if your organization is a global organization it still needs to build partnership mostly mostly important mostly important with the local community with the young people with all the different races and culture and the value based organization in the country as well this is how we keep to bridge the gap between different generations. We cannot do it alone. The 60 age, the 70 years age, the 70 years old, the 70 years old cannot, cannot, cannot do it alone anymore. And they have to learn how to empower the younger generation and women while they are in office. This is how, whether we are in the West or in the East or the North, or in the, way, in the south, or anywhere, or in this planet, or in Mars, or Jupiter, or in any other planet in, on, uh, in, in, in the universe of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If I don't allow the younger generation and women to be with me in the organization, I nurture them to make them future leaders, I am a failure. I am a failure. I am a failure. No matter how many millions of followers are following my organization, I am a failure because I am creating Muppets. I'm, correct, I'm, I'm creating not only Muppets, followers, 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 and no leadership. The leader creates leader. The leader creates the flow which let other people to follow his or her flow. And the leader does not follow the flow of other people. He or she always creating the flow for the community, for the society, for the humanity. Okay? And does not follow the flow of others. He learns or she learns from the flow of others. But creating a flow that let everybody to be proud that they are following their own flow. But leader cannot or should not create followers. Leaders create flow and create leaders to follow them. And this is how, how, how we need to build the, the bridge between this generation and generations to come. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the other episode.